was neither affiliated with the NFL nor the New England Patriots. It is what it is. Where did Fitzy go? Where did Fitzy go? I think he's at the Super Bowl. Now I'm here all alone, a shark hosting Pat Show. Where did Fitzy go? Ah, screw it. Welcome to Pat Show. Today we've got Jerry Thornton in studio. We'll hear from our pal Fitzy, live from Minnesota. Review the two bills and so much more. It's a Super Bowl 52 edition of Pat Show. Hit it, you humps! One, two, three, two, three, eight. Wow! Let's go! Pat Show! Let's Pat Show, I'm Mike Dussault, Pat's Propaganda, and today, very special guest, we've got Nick Stevens in Minnesota, so we have the infamous Jerry Thornton here, Jerry filling in, Thornton! there you go, very exciting, it's like bringing Brady in for Bledsoe, I feel Yeah, like. I was going to say Brian Hoyer <laughs> for uh, him, I've got, I'm all hooked up on that right Shouldn't there. you have a glove got... on for that? Yeah, well, exactly, <laughs> there'll be no shaking hands on, on me, and by the way, I just broke a rule of show business that What's I've been that? following, which is you don't work with a stuffed shark puppet. <laughs> I learned that from Katy Perry. <laughs> She All woke right. me up one morning and I said, Katie, thanks for the No, I have not. <laughs> I know. We, we, we're scrambling without the Fitzy puppet. So we're going to do our best without Nick here. But we do have him in Minnesota. We're going to try to get him on the phone a little bit. He's a very busy man. Uh, so it's an exciting show. Super Bowl coming up. I mean, I, you know, I'm on edge. I, you know, I'm nervous. We were, at the, we were at the send off yesterday. There's just so much going on. What are your thoughts right now as we, we sit here, you know, just a few days away? I, you know what? I haven't taken a deep dive into the X's and O's on this thing, Mike, but let me tell you a few definites. One, the Patriots will not score in the fourth, first quarter. That much we know. And two, I'm not going to have a lick of fun. It's going to be stark raving terror that if it takes as many years off my life as the Jacksonville game did, I will have died in 1994. But I'm ready for it. Yeah. This, is, this is our lot in life. And by the way, when you say that, every Lions fan in the world goes, oh, you poor things. <laughs> oh, let, let's do a, you know, a, a 5K to raise awareness of your plight, <laughs> not scoring points in the first quarter of yet another Super Bowl. You know, I mean, every Super Bowl has gone down to the last play. I mean, it's just, right. how is that possible? Like, aren't we due at some point for just a game where the Patriots are clicking on all cylinders and the other team just is, like, overwhelmed by the moment and just plays like crap? You would think, law of averages, we've had seven of these, and the closest thing to a blowout, and that is, is not close at all, was the Eagles game. And even still, they had the ball with a chance to score late and the, the, to tie it up or, or to win. So I've just resigned myself to the fact that that easy one that we want, where we can relax, put our feet up like Niners fans did back in the day, and go, oh, man, we got this. It's just not going to happen. The first quarter is going to be like, waking up in a trap set by Jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's, it's so true. It's so true. I was, I was watching, because uh, I'm a big nerd, I went back and watched the Three Games to Glory, which if you haven't checked, obviously, if you're yeah. watching the show, you probably own them like I own all of them. <laughs> yeah. But I went back and looked at the Eagles one and, and watched the, uh, the commentary where they had Matt Light and Roosevelt Colvin and Teddy Johnson talking. And, and it was really interesting. They said this, you know, back in Super Bowl 39, how Bill Belichick told them, the Super Bowl is usually two different games in the first and second half. And, of course, right. you look at last year's, there's no greater example than how it's two different games. And so, you know, I wonder if that's going to kind of play out again as the Patriots, especially with the experience that they have, knowing no matter what happens in the first half, you have a chance to either do a lot better or a lot worse in the second half. Yes, it's this coaching staff is just so preternaturally patient. And they're asking us to be patient, too. The one thing you can't ask us to do, that's just too big an ask, absolutely. And they do it at the beginning of the season where they really don't have it figured out yet. And they're, they're prepared to know that September is not going to be for them what December is. They, they're prepared to say the first 20 minutes of the game are not going to be what the last 10 minutes are like. So we just have to get into that sort of Zen thing of just accepting that they're going to give vanilla looks on both sides of the ball early on. And they're going to just 
have confidence that they'll figure it out. I just feel like it's going to be another one of these things against a good defense where we're going to be saying, Brady, for the love of God, save the day. You know, they're going to be sending up the bat signal, and he's going to have to come in and oh, save everyone. I, would, I just would prefer it not to be because it would be fun to enjoy a Super Bowl Sunday. For <laughs> it once. would. It yeah. would be fun to just sit back and enjoy, you know, ah, another touchdown. It's 52 yeah. to nothing. This is great. Yeah, run up the score. Uh, I want that to be the controversy. No Why is he still no in there? Luck. Start yeah. getting yourselves ready now for the Super Bowl. And also, we're on Facebook Live now. We want to hear your questions. Uh, you know, anything you guys have, throw it at us. The questions for Jerry. I mean, Jerry, he's an accomplished author we have here. Little, little oh, quick, yeah. quick, quick side story. When I moved back cross country, and I've told Jerry this story already, uh, but my dad and I, we listened to Jerry's book, From Darkness to Dynasty, through Utah. It took us through Utah, Colorado. Outstanding read. If you guys, and again, if you're watching the show, you probably should already own this book and have read it multiple times, but uh, let's give a little plug to the book. I mean, you're a little bit of a Patriots historian, right? I appreciate it, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, anytime I talk to a book author, my first question is always, why? Why did you write this? And the reason I wrote this book is because I always wanted to read it, and the universe was taking its sweet ass time getting around to it. Can I say sweet ass? <laughs> um, and so I said, I'll, I'll write it because I think it's a fascinating story. And I think if you live through those times, maybe you only know a little bit about how bad it is. If you're like my kid who's 22 and has seen them gone to, their, to his eighth Super Bowl in his lifetime, when I was his age, they had never won a playoff game. And I was obsessed with this team that was a laughing stock that was always in danger of moving until they were saved by an obscure cardboard box manufacturer. So, <laughs> you know, I, uh, who turned out to be the greatest owner in sports history. So it's just, I, I made it as fun as I could because I don't want, I, I was going to die before I wrote just some dusty history tome. Yeah. I'm currently through major production of my second book, also about the Patriots which means I've officially written more books than I've ever, ever read in my life. So, um, but yeah, it's been a labor of love, believe me. I, I mean, I love what I loved most about the book was just that it was it was from the fan perspective, and, and I, you know sometimes that gets a, a negative connotation. But you know, it just it felt like you lived through it, and you lived through the ups and downs, and that's what I love about fan takes and what I try to bring to my kind of stuff is like you cared. You know, it's not just like this cold media take of like, and then they won, and then they lost, and you know, and, and they, it, there's just no sense of emotion to it. And what I liked was that. You were living and dying with every moment, especially one of my favorite parts was the 76 team, uh, which was the year I came on into the earth. So uh, I didn't get to watch that one, but uh, I can go back, I guess. But that, that was a, a crazy year that a lot of Patriot fans don't really know about, and as well as kind of how the tuck rule or, you know, kind of came back right. to bite the Raiders. Uh, that, that season was great. Those late 70s teams were the first great Patriots teams built. They had a great coach. Chuck Fairbanks brought into thing, the league things like the 3-4 defense, the the um, Perkins offense that mm -hmm. they're currently using it, it was you know, had its genesis with him and then just as the team got some success he quit and took a job to go coach elsewhere 18 years later Bill Parcells gets him to a Super Bowl had a great team built turned out he had quit to take a job elsewhere <laughs> 18 years apart the same franchise it's never happened before or since and I I like to think the second book is that same thing it's these years but it's where you lived and died, where you were like stunned by them winning in 01, and then they became the most hated team in the world and had some losses that still bother you. They had scandals and controversies and a guy who murdered people. <laughs> and, and yet through all of this, they've, we're now on the verge of maybe a sixth championship. Yeah. It's just so surreal. It's so unthinkable. I, I, I keep imagining I'm going to wake up and it turns out like I hit my head in 2001 and I've just been dreaming <laughs> this entire thing. I mean, it's crazy. You talk about how, you know, it's kind of things repeating themselves. And here we are in the midst of the Patriots about to go, you know, about to go, hopefully about yep. to go. Yep. <laughs> Three out of four Super yeah, let's Bowls. Let's not go again. all Mike Tomlin here. But I know, I know. Don't, don't, we just, did we just give the Eagles locker room material here? I yeah. think <laughs> we might have. But, you know, I mean, those correlations between the first run and now are insane to me. I mean, it's just, it, it, it cocked off by playing the Eagles again. Right. Yep. You, you had, you won one, you didn't win, you win two against the NFC West, NFC South, the Eagles, both coordinators leave. We are on the verge, and again, we're just on the verge, hasn't happened yet, obviously, of beating the NFC West, losing one, beating the NFC South, and then beating the Eagles and losing both coordinators. Yeah. It's time is a flat circle. <laughs> it would just Everything make you think. we have done, we <laughs> do again. It just makes you think that, like, 
they really should win, right? I mean, you can't have all these things line up and then lose to the Eagles, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't have a plan for that. <laughs> I don't have saw any sort. <laughs> 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 ah, that was tough. That was tough. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Well, look, we all know how it goes, and these Super Bowls come down to one play at the end, and it goes one way or the other. And, you know, right. aside from history, that's usually how it goes. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's get to those questions here from Chris Leonard. Uh, what would you like to see? Would, would you like to see TB12 catch a touchdown before he retires? Um, only if it's a Marcus Mariota one. I want to see him throw it and then catch it and then, <laughs> then run it in. So put that in the playbook right now, Josh McDaniels. That will be your legacy. Uh, Jerry, what would you do if the Pats score in the first quarter, asks Stephen Canto. Because uh, the Patriots have not scored in the first quarter of a Super Bowl uh, as, as, we, as was brought up to Bill Belichick this week by Mike Reese, and he didn't take too kindly to the question, even though last year we heard the whole time they're prepping for the Super Bowl against the Falcons, Belichick was all over the team about it. Right. Then Reese brings it up in the press conference, and he's like, well, I don't really care. You know, he's just a little Belichick thing. Yeah. Is, is the question, how will I react, or what would I do to make it happen? Because <laughs> you remember episode one of Black Mirror where the Prime Minister of England had to get intimate with a pig, I, I would do that. <laughs> I would do that if it would, that's what it would take, but I, I don't think it will. Look, it, it could happen. I've just learned to resign myself to the fact that, let, let's just skip ahead. And there have been times they scored on the first play of the second quarter, but I'm expecting zeros with 15 minutes gone. I just I, steal your courage and expect this to it's happen. Just, my, my biggest question is like, why? Why do, they, why do they come out flat in the Super Bowl? I mean, they played Right. Seven Super Bowls. Like, how is that possible? Take that, the first pick. Take <laughs> the first pick. <laughs> I guess. I mean, you know, when you had like the the, the intentional grounding in Super Bowl Forty Six, oh uh, you yep. know, you had all these kind of like random weird plays. It's just so strange for them to never once, because we see it all year. They come out right out of the gate. Pop, 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 pop. Touchdown. Seven zip. Pat, Pat. Yeah, maybe your first seven Super Bowls are just practice for the <laughs> eight. <laughs> I mean, like, look, look at look at how Brady's uh, going away rally, send off rally game has improved. I mean, the mic drop thing oh, was fantastic. Yeah. I bet his first one was a little bit weak. They probably let Ty Law do all the talk and maybe Troy Brown, but this one, go Patriots! <laughs> yeah. Boom. So we, uh, let's take another question. Uh, Dan, bye bye. Maybe I think I think we'll try that. Bye bye. Uh, how much of that NFC Championship game was the Vikings getting out of the dome and having a letdown game, and how much of it was the Eagles? just playing out of their minds at home. Uh, I think that's a real good question because yeah. I feel like before the Viking game, like before when you're going back to look at a lot of these like previous Eagles games, you know, the, 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 the first one against the Falcons, they kind of struggled. They were managing it, you could tell. And then it was just this explosion against the Vikings, which was so surprising. I don't think anybody saw it coming. I mean, Nick Foles looks like, you know, the second coming of Kurt Warner out there. Right. Uh, it's hard to say. It's such an anomaly kind of. Yeah, and I mean, I hate to go right to the cliche, but you turn the ball over. This is what happens. You know, Case Keenum throwing picks, you, you, they're coughing the ball up, and they got some momentum going, and I, I think, you know, the Vikings were suffering a letdown. I, I do, you know, the Laces Out podcast on uh, iTunes, on Barstool Sports with A.J. Hawk and Pat McAvee, two NFL guys who agreed. It just, they hit such an emotional high winning that game that they thought was lost uh, against New Orleans yeah. that they just weren't mentally prepared for it, and it happened. It's a big letdown. Yeah, yeah. If we're lucky, maybe the Eagles feel like, okay, they had their – their Super Bowl. They've had their, you know, underdogs twice, and they have a letdown, but I'm not counting on it. Sorry. <laughs> well, we're, we're waiting for Nick here. He's, uh, you know, he's doing all kinds of media things. We're going to try to get him on the horn in a little oh, bit. Nick I believe so. I know. Well, he's, he's at the Mall of America. He's having <laughs> Orange Julius. <laughs> right? He's having, like, a pretzel from Annie Ann's. How embarrassing is that? I mean, both teams are staying there. They're doing, like, all the press. Media Row is there. I mean, it's crazy. They just piled everything into the Mall of America. And before the show, Mike and I were feeling sorry for ourselves that we're not there. And then you just remind yourself it's one of the few places in North America that is lousier than it is here, and it's overrun with Eagles fans, you know? So I'll, I'll go to the Hanover Mall, and I'll go spinning through the AC Moore there or something and try to, you know, recreate the experience. I mean, it feels like Minnesota here. We had to, like like trudge through snow to get here. I mean, Jerry's driving <laughs> dozens of miles. I, you know, it's, it's, right. we're, we're dealing with our own elements here 
on Super Bowl week for Pat's show. So I don't know, should we run the uh, should we run our video from yesterday's yeah, send up? So let's yeah, go let's go to let's the tape. Let's go to the video yesterday, tape. Me and Paul here from Media Boss that we went down to the send off, which was just crazy. I mean, so many Patriot fans there. I mean, getting there at 3 a.m. I mean, I, you know, you just when you've seen the craziest of crazy Patriots fans, you go there. I saw a woman dressed up as like a nun with like a Tom Brady is, you know, Tom Brady <laughs> says thing. And uh, but the highlight for me, which I posted, was that they had a giant cake. And so after the whole thing disperses, I'm seeing people walk around with humongous hunks of cake. And I'm like, I want some cake. So we go over. They had this giant like football cake that they were just I mean, great job, Patriots. I mean, talk about they know what to do. That was a perfect like little cap to the event. But we cut together a little video just to kind of show some highlights. And uh, we're going to roll it for you right now. Shut up and play the tape. Play the tape. Good times. Uh, Matthew Slater's reaction, I could watch that forever. It was like, uh, hey, kick it off now. Oh, I want to kick, I want to take someone's head off. I and couldn't believe he did that. I mean, I was just like, did yeah. he just drop the mic? And yeah, and how about Brady with a tough act to follow Mike's dance moves? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, number 2001, the, the rally at City Hall Plaza. Mr. Kraft, <laughs> we have an ownership. I'll pay these fools money dance. You made him look like Chris Brown. I had to throw that in. I had to throw it in. I also I also tried to put a, a video of me eating the cake in there, but my wife, like, she's like, maybe take that out. Take that. I don't know why. She didn't like me eating the cake in it, but well, we but, got you cake. but luckily right here, thanks to our friends at Media Boss, you got, nice. we got more cake because, you know. Is this Patriot send-off cake? <laughs> well, actually, it was. Uh, <laughs> Do I have to eat it right now? Oh, all it, right. It's from the TB12 method book. Yeah, this like is you, there are certain there are certain types of cake that you're allowed to, allowed to have. I can taste the avocado in there. <laughs> it's wonderful. It was actually yesterday. It was Boston cream pie, which but there was cake in it. Yeah. So I don't know. People are explaining that to me that like you're actually it, it's it is pie. Yeah. It's pie. They call it pie, but it's it's cake. Boston cream pie is cake. And yet cheesecake is a pie. Why do you park in a driveway and drive in a parkway? 
I'd like follow, to know. We're going um, full Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, yeah. you know, and, I, and how about Patriots fans showing up six hours early for this thing? I was worried years ago about what I was calling the Yankee fanification of Patriots Nation, that everyone would just get blase. I've been to games where they weren't enthusiastic, where a winning streak could be snapped and they're streaming out of there in the third quarter. No. It's not happening, and the reason is this idiot. <laughs> I'm not pointing to myself. I'm pointing to him. Yeah. Governor Tarkin, the harder you tighten your grip, the more star <laughs> systems squeeze through your fingers. <laughs> keep trying to come at them. Everyone, keep trying to discredit them. Call them cheaters. All you do is you continue to energize the already most engaged, net-savvy, <laughs> and enthusiastic fans in, the, in all of North American sports. Keep it up. It was awesome. It was a Monday. It was a Monday, and there's kids. Yeah. And, you know, I, there was one lady. She was pushing a stroller full of, like, three babies. I mean, she, like, <laughs> packed her triplets out. To, you know, and they're not even going to remember this, but, you know, someday she'll be like, we were there, you know, like, at the send-off. You know, like, I, like they're literally the Patriot, the actual captains in Belichick, I mean, they were, like, half hour late. They came out for, like, eight minutes. I mean, it was just they came out. Belichick was like... Thanks for coming. If you're there, we'll see you there. If not, we'll see you next Monday. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I've done this 11 <laughs> times now. I used to do it with the Giants. It was a big deal. and just kind of, kind of used to it. But I, I think they genuinely do appreciate it. It's just a oh, formality yeah. that they have to go through. And you know every one of them would rather be doing film study, you know, oh, going, yeah. going over, looking for tendencies or whatever. I, 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 he did. I, yeah. I agree. I mean, you know, it was such a like, and I was saying before the show, like, I have watched Tom vs. Time, which you guys, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch Tom vs. Time. There's first two episodes. It will just like, it just felt like reinvigorated, like the Brady that I fell in love with. Like, I felt like I re got back in touch with those original emotions I had where it's like, I just think he's a, like, how do you hate this guy? Like, how does anyone hate Tom Brady? I just don't understand it. I had an old boss who's just like, I hate him. I'm like, how? I've got this theory, and, and tell me if I'm off base, all of you guys. Brady is the most overly reviled public figure of our lifetimes. Like a guy that hasn't earned, hasn't earned anybody's scorn, but gets it yeah. on everything. And I'm just doing this laundry list in my head coming over here about just the things he's taken crap for. He's a cheater. He's a liar. He destroyed his phone. The Globe accused him of stealing money from best buddies. Kids with developmental you know, disabilities that he has raised trillions for, and they accused him of stealing. Like, what has he done to earn anybody's wrath other than be really good and, by the way, polite to people? Yeah. I, I feel like the Patriots have almost become like a psychological study on just like the effect of like beating people, consist like constant success and how it eventually kind of turns on you for, you know, whatever reason, it's just human nature. Like people just, as my dad always says, people wish you well, they only wish you so well. It's yeah. the opposite of the Stockholm Syndrome. It's uh. the Patriots. <laughs> yeah, pa yeah. Pa pa Patriots, Patriots Derangement Syndrome. I, I used that in a headline yesterday. And, you know, it's, what's, what's the line from uh, Dark Knight? You either die a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Yeah. They've, they've done the worst thing you can do in American life, which is to not go away. Yeah. That's what everybody wants eventually. But to call him all these other things on top of it, like that he's arrogant and he's a weirdo and he's a snake oil salesman. No one's forcing you to buy $200 <laughs> ceramic line pajamas. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's optional. You, you don't have to buy his book. It's $35. But people say, what's he doing right now? Okay. Peyton Manning, who's America's sweetheart, did nothing but show for like pizza and really bad pizza and, <laughs> and light beer. The first person he kissed after he won the Super Bowl on the lips was Papa John. Who did Brady go to? His mom. And who does everybody love? The big thumb-headed goober with the massive five head <laughs> and not the guy who came from nothing. You bet, Sorry. I, I, you better watch out, Jack, because in your one shot, you got, you got the TB12 method like right be, like if you just kind of like... You just kind of slide it. Whoa, there. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Look, you can't tell who's who, can you? <laughs> Same pose. Jerry, Tom. Jerry, uh, Jerry. I don't know. <laughs> I got to uh, I got to put some people at, at, at ease, though, because we've had a couple people have mentioned this. And, and guys, no, Nick is not going to the game. He, we were almost going to let him. But then we were like, <laughs> we cannot let Nick go to a game this year. <laughs> He's got a horrible luck. He's at, he's at the two games they lost this year at Foxborough. Fitzy was there. Yeah, so we let him go out there and do do a little thing, but you know, do you do you buy into that? Like, do you get su how superstitious are you as a fan? Uh, 
pretty <laughs> superstitious. My brother and I had a long streak where every time we were together, they lost. And it was during a period of time where they didn't lose many games. Like, we were together for the two Super Bowls that shall not be named. And, oh. yeah, and we, we stared fate right in the eye for a Super Bowl 49 against Seattle. And we switched positions <laughs> on the couch, which made all the difference. <laughs> Um, but yeah, fit, uh, fit, you know, Nick and I and our buddy George from the uh, yeah. Bleep Pats fan says videos, Thank like you. we were together for the Jacksonville game doing exactly that. Like, all right, I'm going <laughs> to sit over here to see if it works. Change and your jersey. people, I know people look at you like you're an idiot when you do stuff like that, but we all do, no, right? Who yeah, are we kidding? Everybody. Who everybody does, everybody does it? I sent a, I sent a tweet out uh, last week just saying like, what's, you know, like of all the games, what did, what did you do that like you, you changed a shirt or, you know, what was it, your special thing that you wear and everybody's got everybody thinks it's them you know and it's like if one person doesn't get it right right it all goes to shit we you know we all we're done yeah. we're done and show me that person who will say they're gonna win you know you might predict <laughs> but you say yeah but if you know what i mean we all couch it in that way because we don't want to be that one who just accepts the the cosmic balance Red i guess dance. Red dance one. Uh, uh let me actually let me yeah. get let me do beezer crafts first because we, we were talking a little bit about this and uh and jerry brought it out before which is uh we're actually right now at the Max Kellerman cliff. When he said in the next 18 months, Tom Brady is gonna fall off a cliff, here we are. July 28th, 2016, Max Kellerman said, within 18 months, if not sooner, it, he went like this. This was 18 months, I guess, in his world. And <laughs> since then, I've done the math. Brady's won uh, 29 games and lost four. Um, he's thrown oh boy i i have the numbers i want to say he's thrown 60 touchdown passes and 13 interceptions won one super bowl mvp another one's still in the balance and probably is gonna win the uh nfl mvp that's his cliff guys 18 months of the day and max kellerman said no one's gonna remember that i said this when i turn out to be right oh no we remember and by the way he oh, doesn't remember he max, does you jerk. and i want to make sure that you're aware of this too um he does not want to be tweeted at by Patriots fans. Do not tweet at Max oh, Kellerman sorry, with two man. L's and one N. What was that? What was that yeah. handle? He, uh, at Max Kellerman, two L's, one N, and he Don't says Patriots fans yeah. are duh <laughs> dumb, and he hates to hear from us. So do not, under any circumstances, tweet at Max Kellerman. It's, uh, okay. We're having a very Gronk episode right now. right now. <laughs> I, I'm just excited because we were hovering right at 69 viewers for a while, which oh, I think, oh, hey now. which means Gronk's gonna play. Gronk's <laughs> gonna play. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, people are grateful. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's true. Nick is not going, so I'm glad everybody's Todd. You're yeah. relieved. Dan is relieved. So many people. I mean, this everybody is what is this is. Like this is everybody's so happy that Nick Stevens doesn't get to go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> it feels a little bit mean, but. Um, but why don't we why don't we hop into some tweedia? Yeah, we've, there's been some media this week, plenty of stuff going on. You know, I mean, it wouldn't time, it, Let's get into exactly. It. It's tweedia time, and uh, you know, it wouldn't be a Super Bowl week without controversy. And I almost feel like we're skating on thin ice right now because we haven't really had anything. We, we've been hovering around the uh, the Steve Spagnuolo talking about you know that the Patriots right. stole signal. You know, like like it wouldn't be a Super Bowl week without some kind of controversy. But there hasn't been a bombshell yet, which I'm you know kind of still waiting for. Yeah, right now it's sort of what mining that gold that always comes from other columnists and other cities. You know, I, I quoted one uh, yesterday, wrote it on the bar stool about a guy from uh, San Francisco, last name is Cone, uh, Grant Cone, I think his name is, who said that Belichick has ruined football. <laughs> Single-handedly well, ruined him, football <laughs> with his secrecy and his cheating and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm sure that like the I don't know, the Cro-Magnons really resented, you know, homo sapiens. <laughs> like, look at them. They think they're so smart, domesticating animals and using tools. <laughs> look at them. They're ruining the world. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, Salieri hated Mozart. And, you know, they, they threatened to chop Galileo's head off. Hey, I'm sorry if this guy's better at doing things than your guys. But as Brandon Marshall said, and now I'm quoting Brandon Marshall, that's what you've done to me. <laughs> That's how he said involved. you should all be ashamed. Every, the other 31 markets should all be ashamed that they have let the Patriots be this successful in a league that discourages exactly this kind of success. Yeah. And, and let's see how the San Francisco guy feels with Jimmy Garoppolo playing in the city for the next 10 years. Or hopefully, assuming they resign. I mean, he might be Great like, point. thanks, Belichick. You didn't quite ruin it, but uh, let's get to it. This is the first one. I, I just love this. This little Tom Brady. Uh, oh, so here we go. The first shirt. Um, 
and you can't really totally see it, but he was wearing this one, and it just this is something that really bugs me, and you can just see the start of it on his sleeve is that he had all the years that they supposedly won the Super Bowl, but you can't put 02, 05, like it, it's it wasn't the, the year. You right. can't do the February. You got to do the year the season happened. So I was like, that's wrong. You got to change it to 01, 03, 04, and that's how you refer to it, right? Uh, yeah, I'm with you, and I I ordered off of and. Don't judge me. I love Jeopardy. Uh, I ordered a T-shirt that said, this team won the 2017 Super Bowl <laughs> in, in Jeopardy font. <laughs> but it wasn't the 2017 Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. And yet if they win, then the T-shirt is still valid. Know, you know I what am. I mean? I feel like because they will have won the 2017 just, just Super Bowl. Me. Right. That's why you do that stupid Roman numeral yeah, thing. Get on you it. only see Roman numerals in your life. Uh, the Stations of the Cross at Catholic Church, Rocky <laughs> movies, and the Super Bowls. And, and maybe Star Wars. I could see Star Wars. That was, you know. Oh, that's right, too. That, okay. that, you know, yeah. like, wow. like the opening crawl. Because it's, I mean, you remember how confusing you were like, like, episode yeah. four? Yeah, they started. What the, what the hell happened in episode three? And then we found out, and it was like, wow, it wasn't really actually that great. So yeah. now we know why they started. Can I, can I raise a, 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 a very small Super Bowl beef that I admit is stupid as anything? Bring up your beefs. I miss... The old unique logos for yeah, every Super Bowl. I think they're going back to them. Maybe am I wrong? I, no, I, I, think it's, I think it's just from now on. The that L one. and then the, the Lombardi trophy. It's boring. Yeah, and I like the winners. Oh, let's see what they have. Oh, it's in Georgia. There's a peach and there's the Rose Bowl. It's roses or whatever. And yeah. it's, that's the dumbest complaint ever. And yet I'm, I, I was always into the graphic design of it. I, I totally agree. And I also like think that it, it brings back the memory of the game. Like seeing the yeah, actual right. like, graphic of it. Because I mean, like that Super Bowl 42 patch is just emblazoned on my head. Like, you know, as soon as you see, I see that, I recoil. Yeah, you know, like I look like Brady watching it, Super Bowl yeah. 42. Yeah, it's like staring at the eclipse. <laughs> Steven, look at it. You got to poke a hole in a piece of cardboard. You remember all but, that? But the one against the, uh, uh, you know, we all have like a beer koozie or something that has the one against the Rams. Yeah. And that, you, you look at it, right. has instant memories. Whereas yeah. this one, you got to go, all wait, the there's same two eyes I, after I, that I, or whatever. I, you know? I, I. <laughs> yeah. The other one that bugs me too is uh, the, the GU, the Gene Upshaw, which was the Brady game that we won't mention in 2008. They had the big GU oh, right, uh, right. on the on the, and that was the. Yeah, well, let's not talk about that game. Yeah, I, that I MHK <laughs> was gonna be so magical, <laughs> ah, and yet it brings back bad memories. Yeah. You know. All right, let's throw the next one up there. What's that? Oh. Oh, oh yeah, God. come on. All right. Oh my God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. And here we go. It's uh, and and we just got a text from Nick, so he is ready. We're gonna get ready to call him, but let's 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 lay into Mark Wahlberg for a second because we call him the enemy of the show, because <laughs> we just don't buy his whole I left the Super Bowl early because my kid. He got sick or something. Yeah, and, then and then he changed, changed that story. story. My kid was so upset. Oh, well, we love too much. He's too competitive. That's our problem. <laughs> we just went too passionate. Oh, Stop. Get and out of here. And now he comes up with this. Uh, I think the Patriots win by 17. But if the Eagles win, I'm telling you, I would be fine. If anybody else, I would be devastated. How excited am I to have the Eagles win? Uh, Mark. Yeah. Mark, Mark, you're not. How you doing, Mark? He's going to continue to be the enemy of the show, uh, you know, until he can, like, turn. I don't know. I think he's, I think, I, you know. Because he played an Eagles player in a movie. I saw Ted, too. <laughs> you went at Brady in his bedroom with a red Solo cup. <laughs> looking for a little bit of boy batter. Yeah. And, you know, you that should trump playing a guy in a movie that no one saw Invincible. That's, that's, that, that's the one you might watch on cable if you're sick. It was the one you know? non-Boston, <laughs> right? It's like the one yeah. non-Boston movie that like Mark Wahlberg was in. I go to like, well, Philadelphia movie, what are you doing in this? It's like, you and know? he's the guy that they chose to announce the banner drop this oh, year. What, I know. is he a I fan know. or is he food. not he a fan? So you can't, there's, there's an old expression that uh, JFK used to cite all the time. It's, it comes out of Dante's Inferno that the hottest places in hell are reserved for people who stay neutral in a moral crisis. The Super Bowl <laughs> is a moral crisis. You can't be neutral. It's one or the other. There are no half measures. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. All right, let's get this guy on the phone. Uh, five, five, five. <laughs> Five 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 fifty. It's like a jerky boy's bit. <laughs> oh, do I have to dial nine to dial out here? Uh, no, you have to dial one, guys. Yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, well, sorry. Uh, this is old. I mean, I don't. I'm not used to. Yeah, come on, guys. We're burning people's bandwidth here. Oh, it's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. Morning, live from Super Bowl Fifty Two. Nick Stevens from Pat Show here. Nick, hello. Nick! There he is. There he is. We're floundering here without you, Nick. It's just been, uh, it's just been, so far been about a half hour, just me and Jerry staring at the camera, just saying we're having a good time. So we miss you. <laughs> 
tell us what is going okay, on in Minnesota. Okay, now my week can officially begin because I just got the Pat Show air horn. <laughs> you, you missed it, didn't I you? I wonder what? why I wasn't able to sleep last night. It must have been, it definitely wasn't the two IPAs, the pound of cheese curds, the sliced sausage, <laughs> and the fries. What? You guys, this is, this is beyond surreal. Imagine whatever is the next level of outrageous surreal and unbearable. I mean, Jerry, unbelievable. Jerry, you were here a couple of years ago. You can sort of speak to the size and scope of all of this and how awesome it is, but at the same time, like kind of how overwhelming it is. Yeah, you feel like even though you're absorbing it all, you're missing so much. You know, you feel like you should be doing more. There's comedy to be had around every corner, but, but what? Where do, you, where do you choose? Who's your greatest celebrity encounter so far? Uh, the greatest celebrity encounter so far? I, the Fitzy I Puppet? I, well, I mean, if you, if you want to talk about, if you want to, I mean, this is the, the biggest interview I've done so far, so <laughs> I'm mean, out here crushing it. Uh, um, I, Mike, I also love the fact that you were saying that you guys were just sit, sitting around staring like at each other just like hey this is fun i imagine like you said that you're in, that the show so far was like when garth was by himself doing <laughs> like, i'm, having, I'm fun. having fun i'm having fun <laughs> so uh, so the biggest one so far last night was being i was on dude i was on the floor last night for media night i mean i was an arm i was the closest i've ever gotten i even put i put a little instagram video up on uh 50 uh, Instagram.com slash FitzyGFY, I did a, a video where I just I showed everyone how close I had gotten to Brady and that that was the closest I had ever gotten to him at that point. You know what the pro move was? Wearing an adult diaper so that in case I peed myself <laughs> a little bit, and it wasn't an issue. Nick, Nick, who else did you get to, did you get to talk to any of the uh, other Patriots uh, players last night? I did. Uh, I went up to the, o- the only player of the 10 that are at the special uh, – you know, museum-style podiums. The only one I was able to get close to because they're just such a throng of people all dressed in ridiculous Dora the Explorer, people in lab coats, you know. <laughs> you're, not, you're not sure if, like, a Halloween shop exploded or if it's, like, people waiting in line to audition for Top Chef or some other foolish reality show. So you go, and I got up close to Matthew Slater at the end, and as he's walking away from his podium, he gave me a... Oh yeah! Which like, <laughs> like, gave me just a little bit of a little bit of a pass boner, which was kind of awesome. But in terms of guys I got to speak to, um, I interviewed Adam Butler, uh, big guy. Uh, saw Malcolm Brown. Uh, my favorite was Brandon Bolden by far. Man, I want him to score more touchdowns. Not just because I've got a ton of money on him <laughs> as a prop bet to score in the Super Bowl. He's such an awesome guy. He totally gets it. Like he's into geek culture. He loves being a patriot. Uh, totally accessible, funny, lighthearted. Uh, and the two of us agreed that the one thing we all need more of in this life is we all need more James Devlin. He's like, he's like, man, you have no idea how much easier it is to do your job when you got Devlin running in front of you. So we agreed that everyone from now, I'm not going shopping ever again unless I have a personal Devlin to open up holes for me to buy things quicker. God, now I feel bad because I've given Bolden a lot of crap over the years about not being able to break tackles. And, you know, it's like, it's like you just talk about these right. guys as football players and then, like, you realize, like, they're just real guys yeah. trying to do their job the best they can. And you're like, you suck. You know, yeah, like, it's like you, you, they say you're not supposed to meet your heroes. Sometimes you're also not supposed to meet the guy you're all hacked off at. You know? <laughs> like, you know, sometimes oh, I'll have problems oh, with, like, Joe Tooney or whatever. And I saw him <laughs> yeah. uh, do a Rubik's Cube in in one minute while he was doing an interview with somebody. <laughs> I'm like, uh, Joe Tooney, I'm sold on you for the rest of your career. <laughs> so, Nick, uh, we, and, we... and I heard so many ridiculous questions being asked, and I heard so, watched so many people like try to seem like they were like, hey, uh, yeah, I'm totally not uh, making this seem awkward for both of us or anything right now, so uh, what's your favorite character on Stranger Things? <laughs> and, and then there's everyone like, and then they all get the death stare and they all start like brow sweating and it just becomes awkward for everyone. Speaking to the idea though of be careful about meeting your heroes, um, I, so I had, I had uh, the polar opposite in reactions last night. I got to meet La Adrian finally. Yeah. La Adrian Waddle was one walking around. He got some attention. I came up to him. I told him I loved him. We chatted for a while. Uh, he, he made me promise that I would mail him a double X uh, Let's Party hoodie because he loved it so much. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then I even posted the picture of the two of us 
it was on my the 50 Instagram, and I put it on the 50 Facebook page this morning, and I spelled his name wrong, and he wrote from his own Facebook account, maybe next time you can learn to spell my la name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Sick bird. And then I got a, and then I got a lull afterwards. So now guys, breaking news, I think I think La Adrian and I are like best Le, buddies. Now. Le friends? <laughs> yeah. All right, we we're gotta get him we're, we're friends. We gotta get we're him on the buddy. show. Oh, he, he's so nice. Oh, hundred percent. I have a feeling he would totally do it. He he's such a sweetheart. He's a giant human being. And I and his response to it was like, wait a second, you are way too nice. He's like, Yeah, that southern those southern roots, that southern charm goes a long way, man. I love New England, but I'm just not like, you know, a New Englander now. And then uh, I asked him, what I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> how does this happen on Sundays? I was like, where did, how do you, like, you do three hours of pushing people around, protecting the quarterback and getting in human car accidents. What do you do? He's like, I go to a real dark place. And I was like, I am not going to ask. <laughs> so, Nick, we got, we got a lot of uh, comments and people were very, very, very concerned that you were going to stay there and go to the game. But we reassured everybody that you're not allowed to go to the game. You're coming back. You will not be in Minnesota for the game. Uh, and everybody was very relieved to hear that. Listen, the stink of my jinx will be 1,100 miles away <laughs> from U.S. Bank Stadium come kickoff time Sunday, 5.30 Central. Don't you guys worry about it. I have resisted overtures and offers to both purchase and receive a ticket. And I am keeping to my word. And I'll tell you, Jerry can probably attest to this as well. After a week of all the hoopla, the hype, the hot takes, the ball talk, the broadcast, and the banana pants. In, the, in a lot of ways, the last thing I want to do is watch a football game. I want to go home and just, like, talk to my friends, see my family, put my feet up, eat a frozen pizza, drink a beer, and cheer on my favorite team. Nick, what else you got planned for the week uh, before we let you go? What, uh, what else is on the docket for you? Anywhere uh, you can pitch for people to check you out? I know you're – are you part of the, uh, the Not Done Network? Are you going to be on that? Yes. I just actually finished uh, – an interview uh, with somebody from NFL PR talking about how they put together this, the insanity that is Radio Row, which is in a food court in the Mall of America. I'm going to be going out every day and shooting a first-person fan perspective, doing the fan-on-the-street work, uh, guiding people throughout the town from the NFL experience to the parties and more. Uh, plus, I'm doing uh, radio stuff on WAAF every day. Uh, and my brother touches down in about two hours. And we're going to go out and shoot a couple of uh, slice of life vignettes, comedy sketches, and maybe we'll even sneak in a, uh, a quick, fitzy, wicked piss of webcast before all is said and done out here in the land of 10,000 lakes and six Super Bowl victories. Let's go, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nick. Well, we'll let you go. Thank you uh, for checking in. Hopefully, Nick, you'll be, we'll be back. Pat show next week. We have no idea what that's going to entail, whether it'll be a <laughs> depressed Pat show or a live from the parade pat show or uh, we just are sitting here eating cake by ourselves and drinking mimosas pat show but uh enjoy the rest of your time uh, in minnesota we'll talk to you when you get back awesome guys jerry thanks for filling in have a great show we are the storm lfg we are not done and mike if you could do me a favor ian everyone at media boss have a, a case of dom perignon or a casket on hold for next <laughs> week we'll do it thanks buddy love you guys go pat <laughs> go pat nick steven hey! nick! I mean, we had to have Nick on. I mean, it wouldn't yeah. be a pass show without that guy. Right? I, well, I'm a little Where disappointed. <laughs> Where are Fitzy? I'm a little disappointed he hasn't had a good celebrity encounter. Yeah. I, yeah. Did I, you, had, you have I had two that, or, well, one was a double because I met both of my spirit animals, Tara Lipinski and Johnny Weir. Oh, I saw the picture. Of uh, that. Yeah. yeah. I basically, like, fanboy creeped up on yeah. them at media day and grabbed them, insisted on a picture, and poor Johnny Weir came out blurry in it, but it's still one of the greatest moments. And I also met Kid from Kid and Play. Or oh. it was Play. Yeah. I'm a little unclear on it. <laughs> they were never really clear on which was which. But, yeah, he was hanging out at, like, the, the media party. Those are the most which, random celebrities. Like, how do those people get to go to the Super I mean, it's like, uh, what are you doing at the Super Bowl? Tara and Johnny do everything. Oh, yeah. It was an NBC um, Super Bowl, okay. so they had them there. Like, they take off from skating to go cover like the Oscars. Like they, you can't get an event worth doing in America without having those two there. And uh, well, we know yeah. you're a, a figure skating, like you're a side fan of figure skating. And that's, you may have seen some tweets about going to figure skating things and stuff like that. So I, I get it, I get World, it. World <laughs> champ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reining that in coach. Can we, can All right, we I'm gonna have to run a lap. <laughs> can we rattle through a, the last couple uh, uh, tweeties? Yeah. Is yeah. that, we got a, a couple more? Yeah, yeah let's, 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 here's a little video for you guys let's roll it (laughs) 
Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's like chubby. They, here's the thing. I just love old chubby Brady. And I got to give credit. It's Stevie Drama, good follow, uh, good guy. He's been following us forever. Uh, it just isn't it amazing how just round faced he is? And then like you just you just see him literally like you can see the avocado and all the the pliability training. Like, oh, it's, 100%, is, is 100%. Isn't it insane? It never happens. It, it never happens. I know. And, and back in the day, I think I was a little less aware of what constitutes a good-looking guy versus a not-good-looking guy. And I'll never forget, after they won the Super Bowl, <laughs> he started getting magazine covers. You know, he was yeah. on the People, and it said, Tom Brady, uh, quote, those lips, that chin, that <laughs> Super Bowl win, exclamation. I'm like, Bra Brady's a good looking yeah, guy. Know, you know? Right? Then a couple of years ago, they show a sideline shot. It's him and it's Jimmy G and it's Amadola and it's Edelman. And I'm with a bunch of couples and someone goes, that is like the Mount Rushmore of handsome. <laughs> Oh, wait, it was me that said it. And I go, I'm in a room full of, like, hot milfs. So come on, the one who's pointing out how dreamy these guys are. But, yeah, he flat out is twice as good looking at 40 than he was at 23. Crazy, How? Right? How is that possible? And, no, no, and also th another thing I noticed is like it, he's kind of growing the hair out a little bit again. Like every time he kind of gets past his normal stage, you're kind of like, are we going back to 2010 long haired Brady? Because that was a <laughs> crazy season. That was tough. Where yeah, he had like yeah. the long locks flowing. I, that, that always just threw me off. Yeah, that's when people had started counting how many years since he had last won one and they were calling <laughs> Giselle Yoko oh, and God. you know, it, whatever, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, we got one more little tweet yet, and I feel like this is the uh, this is the Alex Reamer Brady's daughter thing, which you know has been well covered, and uh, we feel like we could throw a little two cents on it. But uh, in case you guys missed it yesterday, Tom, respectfully, cold-heartedly, just cut the interview kind of short on EI. I know you're a former EI guy. I don't want to sure. get you in trouble. No, hey, but uh, but you know, it just I, uh, this is the kind of thing where I feel like this is why we do Pat Show because we're not. <laughs> We're not talking about Brady's daughter. I mean, it's it's all these things that kind of the hot takes and trying to like fire people up and you're just trying so hard to get an, a reaction from people. You lose sight of the big picture of talking about sports and making entertainment and making it fun for fans to watch. And you know, this just, it just crossed the line. And I think everybody across the spectrum knew it. And I was just so happy to see Brady kind of stand up for himself because you know, as a father, somebody says that about your daughter. It's it's go time, you know. You're red in the right. face, you know. So I just I was glad to see that happen yesterday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. It all comes from that culture where it's got to be all about edge. I've got more edge than you can handle. Here comes my edgy hot takes, and so you go off the rails saying stuff that nobody can see that video and objectively say that that is anything but an adorable little girl with a, a nice family or whatever. But there's that element in the Boston media that is so predisposed towards hating everything about this guy. We hate that he's secretive. So he does a documentary series where he talks about, he shows you that side of his life that he hasn't shown before. Well, what's he doing? Why don't you shut up? Why is he showing his daughter? Like, he, he can't, he can't win. win. In a world filled with bad people, we're going to focus, like, uh, we're going to look for flaws in this guy who's done nothing but handle himself with class in public. It's, it's insane. I don't know. I, don't, I guess I don't root for people to lose their jobs, but he deserves to be reined in yeah. because it's, it's way uncalled for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. uh, but all that aside, I mean, the Tom verse time is, is great. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it a little before the show. Definitely check it out. But um, my favorite moment was just he's watching film and talking about how he can watch film for hours and, you know, just sitting there studying. And then he's bringing up old games and he brings up Super Bowl 42. And to watch him sit there and just looking at him, it's like, that's exactly how I look when I watch Super Bowl 42 or a highlight comes up with a helmet catch or something, you know, it's just, and it's just a reminder as was yesterday of like, we're just all in this together and we've kind of been through all these ups and downs with Brady. So it's like, that's why we feel this connection with him. It's, you know, we feel the same way about that game that he feels. I mean, granted, he was playing. I was just sitting drinking on my couch. But, you know, it's kind of a correlation there. For positively, and, and not just that part of the preparation, but just the physical, like, price that he pays to, to be as good as he is. He's there working with Tom House on his torque and his left elbow and how he can get more behind the ball or whatever. And I, I, 
I said, this is 21 years after he was a freshman at Michigan. He's working on this minutia to get even better. And you watch that and tell me you don't look at him and go, he's talked about playing till 45. I think that's a low estimate at this point. You know, he's working with the resistance like bands. He's and so he's staying fast. Impressed. He's like, yeah. it's crazy. I was just so impressed with how hard he was working. And you know, he was on the beach out in Santa Monica. And I'm just, you know, Edelman uh, throwing it over and over with his throwing coach. I mean, it's just fascinating stuff. So. He's throwing a ball with 12 stitches in his thumb. Uh, on his he's, Come on. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. And All right. Shirtless Edelman. Really. <laughs> shirtless Edelman. So, yeah, just pitching that out there. So, Jerry has just had the opportunity moment. to already see the two bills, which is a 30 for 30 that's coming up this Thursday night on ESPN. And Jerry, we, we, we want to give you a little, no spoilers, no spoiler spoilers, free, spoiler but uh, free. The, the rumors coming out that this is fantastic. What, what did you see? You know, Mike, you, you have great storytellers and then sometimes you have great stories. Like, uh, you know, Steven Spielberg made a great movie series out of an archeologist, you know, but then I saw Zack Snyder take the two most iconic superheroes of all time <laughs> and make a piece of crap, a fanfic that looked like he took three hours of celluloid and ran him down his butt crack. This is one of those rare times where you've got a great storyteller, NFL films, who are up there with Pixar and Marvel, like just the best filmmakers going and a great story. Two of the most compelling people in the public eye over the last, whatever, 30 years, and how their stories intertwine, and you, you get the stuff that we all know, the things that we witnessed in the old NFL films footage, but you get these two guys, like two old warriors, two lions in winter, yeah, sitting there telling their thoughts and their feelings, and you know, what the, the, you know, I resign as the HC of the NYJ's press conference. You get both of them telling you what they thought in that moment mm. and how they've settled their differences and stuff. And it's fascinating. And here's, and again, no spoilers, but you get treated to Bill Belichick haircuts down through the years. And I'm going to just give you this teaser, a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> a very brief, you have to look for it, the Belichick, with, Belichick with like a really bad like 90s Jeff Galuli stash. It's awesome. But I, it, it is among the best things I've ever seen about two fascinating guys told in their own words. Now, is this, is this... back to figure skating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. By the way, I, Tanya, also very all ties together. Now, did they actually do the interview in the, in the Giants locker room? Is, yeah. is this the actual? Yeah, That's crazy. absolutely. Yeah. In the last... 10 minutes of this are just really good where these guys, to the extent that they will bear their souls, and don't expect that it's gonna be, you know, it's not an Oprah episode, but they do really tell you like what they feel and it's, uh, it's a, a, an amazing story. And you forget sometimes how much their lives just kept intersecting with one another and they tell all these stories with, you know, background and, I mean, they go all the way back to like when uh, Parcells was the head coach at Air Force Academy, you know, and, and Belichick was an assistant with the Broncos and they just kept doing things for each other and two great football minds and just geniuses at, at the highest level. Yeah, it's amazing because like, you know, for all like the supposed disdain for the media, it's like when, when NFL Films comes calling or something like this, it's like Belichick, he actually kind of opens up a little bit. I, I mean, thank God for that because I mean, without the football life and you know, all those things that we've seen kind of, you know, do your job right. and the do your job too last year where he actually does give some insight. That, that stuff is always just worth its weight in gold when Belichick opens up and really kind of gives you a glimpse into, you know, behind the scenes of what he's thinking and doing. Well, unless you want to take it from the hot takes culture, because <laughs> I heard Tony Maz the other day saying, Brady's doing this Tom versus time and Belichick's doing the two bills because now they're fighting over who gets all the credit. <laughs> like, really? How do you oh, form those words? How do you up. say that you don't believe it? Nobody believes it. You say you want to hear more from these guys and then they give you this, this glimpse and you go, I, go away. Yeah. I don't want this glimpse it's it's insane but that's that's the boston culture man well and, uh, there's some good, good great stuff yeah we're gonna yeah. hop right in right now because uh, i saw actually rossi uh who's a great follower uh, thank you for all your questions and, and everything you send us uh asking us we gotta, we gotta talk a little bit about the game quick preview before mm -hmm. we uh, you know before we tap out here um and and that begins with uh the run pass option and i wrote a little article this morning about it because this is kind of the all the fad, you know, it's the new fad in the NFL, and the Eagles do it extremely well. Jerry, Jerry, while you're talking, I'm having cake. Just, just cake it up, man. Carbo uh, load for the game. <laughs> I'll just roll through it, but uh, but you know, run pass option, and you, if you see it, 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 shotgun looks like he's going to hand it off, but he holds the quarterback holds the ball for a second, 
reads the defense, and basically I, I kind of compared it to the Patriots' offense because what makes the Patriots' offense so good is it's a thinking offense. It adjusts afterwards to what the defense is doing, and that's what makes it difficult. You, but you have to have receivers who can think on the fly and read the defense and know where to go. Similarly, the quarterback's going to read the defense right after right. the snap, and he's either going to hand it off if that guy is going back in coverage or he's going to throw it if he's coming forward. So it's a very tough play to defend. It's a new thing. Coaches are still trying to figure out how to bend. It's kind of that new trend, and you know, to see Belichick kind of get challenged with this new trend, uh, pretty fascinating kind of game within the game. Yeah, and you know, it's I think very much related to what Chip Kelly was doing, and Nick Foles had a really good season playing in this uh, attack, and then he had the misfortune that has plagued many good quarterbacks of uh, playing for Jeff Fisher, and <laughs> then immediately like regressing back to, to square one. So, yeah, hopefully there's enough tape on this that they can figure this out. And it seems like it's something you have to, as you wrote, like you have to disguise what you're doing, Yeah. which they were doing eventually in the Jacksonville game. But early on, that look wasn't even vanilla. It was it was ice milk, <laughs> you know, but then they finally adjust yeah. and they did a bear's front, which is like five men. And you got a guy on the nose and then two guys in the in the three tech and Jacksonville wasn't quite ready for that. So hopefully they're hitting the ground running with something that's going to work yeah. right from the beginning. You turn Foles over a time or two, and it's a whole new ball game. Yeah, a couple of points of like, you know, college football is really dealing with this. And some of the things I kind of unearthed when I went down the run pass option hole uh, was, you know, play man to man defense so that, you know, you're not playing mm -hmm. off coverage because that gives, you know, an easy slant throw. Uh, mixing up your coverages up front. And that's really what the Patriots do really well. You know, traditionally, I mean, they've been very vanilla because they've had injuries. They haven't been able to kind of disguise who's coming and who's going. Uh, I think Kyle Van Noy and Patrick Chung are really the two big guys because they talk a lot about having that strong safety that can come down into the box. And you don't really know. He can play both. Confusing Nick Foles, I think, is going to be a big key. But any other things in terms of this game that are standing out to you, you think are under the radar, just ma interesting matchups. Yeah, so well, uh, you know, uh, ancillary to what you just talked about, Stephon Gilmore, be huge in this. And I, I feel like with him, you know, he's still, to people who aren't paying attention as much as you and I and, and everybody here do, um, are still going off that first impression. Back in September when we thought that his guy was a disaster. Newsflash, he's playing his ass off. Like, it's it really should be more like a rom-com movie. The first date didn't go well, but it turned out we're just perfect for each other. And who's better at playing man coverage than him? He's still good at zone, but man is his, is his strength. And you do that, and then I guess it really comes down to the defensive line being able to slow down Blunt. You know, and they did a just a phenomenal job the, the you know in the last week and and you know between Malcolm Brown who's back practicing again and yeah. Adam Butler who we mentioned earlier you know if if we can get Allen Branch back and just get some fat bodies in there to force Blunt to the outside where he's not as effective and I hate to say it, and this sounds weird every time I do, but Kyle Van Noy is such a key to this team. <laughs> Kyle Van Noy. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? I mean, it's crazy how he's. He just like Nick and I have talked a lot about him on the show, just how he's just kind of settled in and he's letting it kind of come to him and he's just making these big plays. It's almost, you know, he just figured out what they were asking him to do and now he's doing it. But huge. That's the guy, weak side linebacker that they try to target with this run pass option. Uh, I think you're right. He's going to be a huge key. He needs to be a playmaker in this one. Sideline to sideline, running downhill, finding his way through holes. And when they play that spill technique where you fill the gaps, and let the linebackers streak to the ball. And we've seen guys here that were great at that. And he's starting to be in that category. And I just, it's, again, it just sounds like fiction, but it's, it's true. Kyle Van Noy is a terrific Patriots linebacker. Yeah, you know, Dan, Dan, bye-bye again. Another mm -hmm. comment. Thank you, Dan, for your comments. We appreciate it. Anybody else wants to get a couple questions in on the clock? We're going to wrap it up in a second. But, uh, you know, comparing Nick Foles and Alex Smith and, you know, how similar do you think they are? And, I mean, a lot of what I'm seeing, Eagles fans are like, oh, the, you know, the Chiefs tore the Patriots up with this, and, you know, this is how to beat the Patriots. And I can't say I totally disagree. There's a lot of similar elements between those two offenses coming in. Uh, does that Chiefs game still kind of haunt you a little bit in terms of how they attack the Patriots? I know it's first yeah. game of the season. But. I feel like the Patriots overall, their scheme has so improved. And they, they back then they weren't all on the same page. And, you know, and, and let's – consider ourselves lucky that the f starting five in the secondary, and it is a five, and it has been a five all year long, 
have stayed healthy. Yeah. They lost Gilmore for a few games there, but they've got the, the, the three safeties and the starting corners that we started the year with, and that's rare in this league. So a biggest concern, I would think, too, is uh, pro football focus. I don't know if you're big into that advanced stat kind it's of thing. Somebody's, but somebody's opinion. Take it for what it's yeah, worth, exactly. Yeah. But they've got the, uh, the Eagles as the highest graded offensive line in football. And by mm. the way, they lost their left tackle. So <laughs> that's, that's crazy. right. That does not bode well. That 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 gives me pause. Yeah. I have pause right now. You gotta. I mean, it's such an element of the Patriots where they lost a lot of really talented guys, and you know, even their starting quarterback. And to continue rolling, we've seen it with the Patriots. It's just the mark of a team that's well coached, that understands the system, what they're being asked to do. Uh, super impressive. We really went down an X and O's kind of wormhole this week. Uh, me and Jerry are kind of a little more on that. Nick's okay. a little bit more of the uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of other end out. of the entertainment session. But uh, well, uh, one more. What's the matchup looking like between Ertz and Chung? Is he up to the challenge? I think that's a great point, again, from our friend Rossi. Um, it, it, that, you know, Patrick Chung's been lights out. I think he's a huge key to this game as well. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely strength on strength because Ertz is the best weapon. I hate to go to that cliche that they have at their disposal. And Chung has been exceptional at stopping tight ends this year. I, off the top of my head, I want to say he's given up like 23 completions on the season or something like that. I mean, so that's, that's, he's been nails. Former and, Eagle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a guy who, and I did not want him back in a Patriots uniform. Uh -huh. I was like, yeah, I don't need. It's like special you know, team depth. Yeah, like, he was like special the. special team depth for Patrick Chung. Thanks. Yeah, he was the Pythagoras of bad <laughs> angles his first time around. But Belichick has admitted he was wrong about how he used them and has, and has found a whole new role for him. And it's been uh, perfect. So I just think, you know, that's, that plays to the Patriots and they can give him help or whatever. But, um. God, who knows? I still think this game is is going to be razor thin. Are again. you are you a prediction guy? I'm not really a prediction Aaron, guy. No. And, 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 and Patriots rule number one: Patriots score more than thirty. The other team scores less than thirty. What's the final score? Yeah. All right. I, I'm gonna do it. I I hate predictions. Yeah, I just feel too. like you know. I, you know. I, like sometimes I'm just like 75 to 24. You know, just make something <laughs> say stupid. Say up, something like, right. That's my prediction, and I'm sticking with it. You know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's funny, you look at like the points per average, I mean really an average Patriots win is 30 to 20, um, but I'm going to say it's going to be like a 27-26, which is a random score and that's why I'm picking it, but it's a one pointer, it's a heartbeat, you know, we need a, a stop at the goal line again and we all have heart attacks and barely make it, but you know, one point game, Pats win. I gotta, you got to say Pats win. Who predicts Pats don't win if you're doing Pats show? Right, exactly. The yeah, Eagles are going to win, sorry. I, I got to think ultimately that they figure it out in ways that uh, Doug Peterson doesn't mm. because he's got a bad history of this kind of stuff. I, I refer you to the, uh, the Chiefs playoff game a couple of years ago where they had that weird six minute drive <laughs> to nowhere that, you know, they just were bleeding the clock down while they were down two scores to the Patriots. And it was like, what, are, are they up two scores? What is this? Um, so ultimately, I don't think he is going to out X and O the, the Patriots, but I think it's going to be close. I, you know, 24 23 i think that that no, close I'm no that, that sounds ridiculous and I, at Come some on. point i have <laughs> at some point i have an out of body madden, experience madden yeah we got oh, yeah. madden pats 24 20. i mean that sounds about right and wasn't that what wasn't that what the super bowl was uh what was 39 or was that somewhere in that neighborhood i don't know they all blend together because yeah <laughs> what was that yeah. super bowl uh, score so sorry. patriots end up winning that one by three three okay yeah. so all right well that should just about do it. We got one more last thing, and we already saw a little bit of a tease of it in our video that we did from the send-off uh, earlier in the show. But this was just such a great moment. I feel like we need to run this one last time. It is the Brady mic drop, our upon further review. Check it out, all its glory. Just the look on Brady's face. Mwah. Can I throw something? Can I be like, <laughs> that's all for us? Jerry Thornton, go check him Woo! out. Barstool yeah, Sports. Right. What, what else? Are you, what are, you're all over the place. You, got, you have a, a Laces Out podcast. He's got books coming out. How are yeah. you even here? Uh, Don't you uh, have to go do uh, something? Yeah, <laughs> it'll all be on, uh, on Barstool Sports is where it all begins and ends, and I'll be plugging the heck out of everything. Also, part of the Deflategate documentary that is going to be released soon with oh. law professors, physicists, and one drunken Patriots fan <laughs> ranting and raving about Roger Goodell. I'm Mike D, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with a who knows what kind of show. That's it. Pat Show out! <laughs> Gold Patriots! Let's go! Pat Show! Let's go! Pat Show!